I wanted to actually bring up leaked audio of the Anti-Defamation League's president, Jonathan Greenblatt, because since we're talking about Students for Justice in Palestine, in this leaked audio, he says some interesting things about young people today, and he mentions Students for Justice in Palestine, SJP, as well as JVP, Jewish Voice for Peace. So let's uh, take a listen to this uh, leaked audio. Taglit, by the way, for people who don't know, is birthright, the birthright program that takes um, young Jewish kids to Israel for free. So a couple interesting things. One is that he says our analysts are in their groups. So everyone should be on the lookout because he's basically admitting that the ADL, Anti-Defamation League, is infiltrating these organizations like SJP and uh, uh, Students for Justice in Palestine and JVP, Jewish Voice for Peace. But you can see that uh, people are really struggling with the younger generation's refusal to accept Zionist talking points. And they, I don't know, I don't, I don't have any insights if he honestly believes these are Iran-based talking points, if he's trying to otherize uh, defending Palestinians and standing in solidarity with Palestinians. But what are your thoughts on this? You know, I think it reflects a reality, which is that this is one of the few places I will agree with someone from inside the ADL on the issue of Israel, is that... A recent poll came out showing that for Americans aged 18 to 34, 70% of them disapprove of President Biden's handling of this crisis. 70%. And there is absolutely a generational shift in the way that people think about this. And I attribute that not to an algorithm, not to some attempt at once again making this a proxy war about Iran but in fact about a generation's ability to look past narratives and instead see fact. And the fact of the matter is that 14,850 Palestinians have been killed at least in the last seven weeks. And when you see that fact and you see the stories of those Palestinians, how could you not come to the conclusion of a ceasefire? That is a very rational and, frankly, a very basic conclusion. Basic in the sense that it is not, it is the bare minimum of what we have to do in this moment. Because we understand that there are deep rooted issues and a deep rooted context 
when it comes to Israel and Palestine. And in order for us to see the world that we so desperately want to build, one where images of reunification between Israeli hostages and their families and Palestinian political prisoners and their families are the norm as opposed to the exception. To build that world, we have to reckon with and end the occupation, the siege on Gaza, an apartheid system of government. This fight for freedom, this fight for human rights is a fight that requires a reckoning with American foreign policy for many, many decades. The critical thing in this moment, however, before we get into a question of what the future looks like, is to ensure that the present does not include any more Palestinians being killed. And for that, it requires a ceasefire. And that is what troubles the Anti-Defamation League so deeply, is that this is a conclusion that young people are coming to. It's a conclusion that 80% of Democrats have come to. It's a conclusion that 68% of Americans have come to. It's a conclusion that a majority of Republicans and independents have come to. So when you are losing pretty much every major political demographic in this country, I would understand why you would panic. And Brad just found this article. TikTok says it's not the algorithm. Teens are just pro-Palestine. In a blog post, the company denied allegations that it has been promoting pro-Palestine content in an effort to sway American opinion. So again, people can't actually accept the fact that uh, younger people just think that human rights for Palestinians is the is something to be respected. Yeah, I, I think it it speaks to, you know, when when for so long expressions of solidarity with Palestinians have been suppressed, whether by algorithms or right. by professional and personal consequence for those who are speaking up. If that is the norm, then when you see a lack of suppression and organic expression, you start to view that as if it's being artificially enhanced because it seems completely unlike that which you have seen before. When in reality, this is what has been hidden from you, which right. is that when people are presented with the facts, they are able to empathize with every person that is killed and they do not ask to see a passport to ensure that they are only grieving people of one nationality. That they're only mourning one set of civilians. And the, the expressions of solidarity, even at their most basic, are simply expressions of valuing human life. Right. But that in and of itself is considered controversial when it comes to Palestinians. And I think it, it, it makes sense because so much of Israeli propaganda over many, many years has also been built on the idea that Palestinians themselves are a fictional people. You know, when, when you think about the narrative does not even acknowledge the existence of someone, then the, the extension of a basic human principle, such as the sanctity of human life, becomes so troubling because it means that in fact, that these are other people. They are deserving of things that all people deserve. And if that is the case, then so much of the narrative that has been built and used to justify the suppression of this people is in fact coming apart at the seams.